What do we got from online, Shanda? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah Just explain this, uh, could you please expand on how Nabi Musa alayhi salam is Kalimullah thinking he spoke with Prophet sallam but awliya Allah of Prophet sallam are always speaking with Prophet, are they all Kalimullah? This was the whole reality, the people who contemplate this title of all the Prophets, their Muhammadan dress, right? We say Kalimullah, the one whom spoke to Allah because he spoke to the flame. Then what he wanted to know is, I want to see you. Allah said, you can't see me, i show you my glory. And all the ulama came and understood that the glory in which Nabi Musa saw was what? He saw Prophet And this is hadith of Jabbar, that I was a Rasul before Adam and his progeny. So the Risalat is ancient before the world of form. So if he's the Messenger of Allah the Khalifa of Allah and you go on a journey Headquarters is going to call you. Why would Allah call you? Allah has a Khalifa. The Khalifa calls you on your journey, on your distant tour and in your journey and says, Allah wants this, Allah wants that. And doesn't understand whom he's talking to, but his inner reality knows that it's not Allah. So let me to see who I'm talking to. Means what? I want the marifah. That I want to be in a state where I understand who I'm communicating with, to have inspiration but don't know who's inspiring you is what? A sign that you have to reach marifah, you have to connect your heart, you have to understand the world of light and whom are you communicating to. From Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadai wa Salihin and all are in the company of Allah and that's why the hadith of Hadith al-Qudsi is describing, Prophet is the walking of this hadith, the walking reality of this hadith, I am your speaking, I am your seeing, I am your hearing. So, As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. So then who's speaking to you? If Prophet is speaking to you means it's Allah speaking to you. And if you don't know that reality and you think Allah speaking to you, Marifa comes and teaches you, no Allah doesn't speak to anyone. Allah speaks to His Prophet right? And that's what they even taught during the revelation when Prophet asked Sayyidina Jibra'il, Ya Jibra'il where you get wahi from? Said, I go to a parda, green parda, a beatific hand comes and gives me what I'm to send to you. Prophet described, I give you permission, I give you <laughs> permission to look behind this parda on your next revelation. Next revelation comes and Sayyidina Jibreel goes to the parda and politely moves the veil and to his astonishment he sees 
in the Muhammad And to his glory that from Muhammad to Muhammad there is a Rasul, he's a Rasul representing Allah And that everything comes from Allah to Prophet with no intermediary and that's why we say, Ummi, Ummi, Bayna Alif or Meem there's never anyone. And that's why the kalima is La ilaha illallah he meem connected. Muhammadun Rasulullah nothing between La ilaha illallah and Muhammadun Rasulullah never ever ever. So it means Allah gives the revelation to Prophet and Prophet brings it down to his physicality through the offices of Sayyidina Jibra'il who are malaika and they're all Muhammadan lights. Their lights are made from Muhammadun Rasulullah These are all the haqqaiq so when you put together everything then you understand who spoke, who spoke to Sayyidina Musa Prophet who taught the knowledges to Adam Alama isma kullaha Prophet who was the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf Sayyidina Muhammad who had the mulk of Sayyidina Sulaiman What kingdom he took from and what authority? It's the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad Have we not given to you all the kingdom? And anything bainahum, anything between them. So who can give a kingdom to Sayyidina Sulaiman if it's owned by somebody else? Nobody. Only the one who owns it can give it. Well they can't take the kingdom of Prophet and give to somebody else. Means the understanding and the wisdoms and the adabs and understanding is Allah just say, I give this all to you, everything to you. So Sayyidina Sulaiman represents what? The authority of Prophet over everything, over the shaitan, over the jinns, over angels, over the freed, over everything, the birds, the ants, every creature. Moving inanimate object, animate objects, all under the mulk and authority of Sayyidina Muhammad Which one isn't? When Allah gives in Qur'an, shaitan can't do anything without Izzat Allah, Izzat Rasul, Izzat al-Mu'mineen. So when the Rasul has the whole entire power, Prophet has that power. Only a ring from His Divinely Presence can come into this dunya and give an authority. And those were the talks on the Holy Sunnah and the reality of the Holy Sunnah. So yeah it's immense, immense when we meditate and contemplate, look how all the Prophets of Bani Israel what they were trying to achieve. And that's why Prophet described, my awliya are like the Prophets of Bani Israel. And another hadith, my awliya, my ulama are inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. Because what they were trying to achieve is given to them for the sake of being in the nation of Prophet inshaAllah. Maybe you keep answering the questions before. <laughs> All right, As- we're on a roll. As Salaamu Sayyidi, please forgive my ignorance. What was the time Sayyidina Muhammad's portal opened for Sayyidina Sulaiman? Thank you very much. We are the Nukt. What was that? 
What was the time Sayyidina Muhammad's portal opened for Sayyidina Sulaiman? What do you mean what was the time? No, it's just what I described. There's, I don't know what the, what the, was the time mean but when he was being attacked by shayateen, who can give an authority and help him from the shaitans? And that's what the reason of marifah and the knowledge of awliya because it can go back in time and forward in time. Why? Because they're sitting with the sultan and describes to them that who helped the… because imagine now the king of the entire malakut and everything created and this earth is like a little dot and you're sitting in the presence of that sultan and saying that, who saved this little dot? So of course I did. So they gave just a ring from my malakut was enough authority for everything on that little dot. It doesn't need more, doesn't need the entire Creator to step in and say, oh my Rasul who can't handle this one, I have to go now and ha help now Sayyidina Sulaiman. No, Prophet is given a, a infinite authority, his kingdom vast beyond imagination, power one whom is shadeed al quwwah Allah describes. Who taught Prophet Allah describes one whom was immense in power, is the one whom supports the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is the Divine Creator. That authority of malakut when Allah is describing kulli shay, it's, it can, encompasses everything. So now these are the stories of this little dot we call earth. What about Pluto? What about a hundred billion different universes? Same, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And Insan al-Kamil, if you study Insan al-Kamil, you say, where is this entire created universe, universes? Where does it all exist? All of it is in Muhammadun Rasulullah in the world of light. But because we don't know our place in the location of all creation, only Allah come into our life to teach us, you're but a dot in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah is the power for that ocean. Malik al Hayat wa Malik al Dunya, Mimha Mim Dan. So, alhamdulillah, every story of the Prophets is for us an understanding and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. If you want beauty, then the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf is the light of Prophet That that special authority and the radiance and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad that was luminous in the reality of Sayyidina Yusuf Why? Because when he came into his reality the sun and the moon were under his authority and the eleven planets. Means that's an immense, immense light of guidance. And that's what makes that light to be beatific. So these are all the realities of Prophet And these awliya they carry those lights and they carry those realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, with this teaching the whole shafa part makes so much sense so that Prophet purifies all our amal and presents it to Allah and how loving them would intercede for us. Please forgive us. Alhamdulillah, that's why the computer people know it. We have talks on what's called machine language. The tech people will understand the kingdom much easier, right? Because everyone thinks they're talking to their computer. Then take some software classes, say, oh I thought I was typing and the computer was acknowledging what I was typing. Said, absolutely not, the computer doesn't know what the heck you're doing. But there's softwares that are interpreting what you're typing. 
and they have layers of software. So every time you type sentences it wants to condense sentences into numbers and letters and numbers, letters and numbers. There's another powerful software that takes these packets and pockets of letters and numbers, purifies them even more, less letters, more numbers. Most powerful is called machine language which is one and zero. Going out fast, one zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, one. Nobody can type and think in that reality. But what is that whole software and inter… inter what is it? And shafaha, shafa represent is the software. Is that all these softwares are interceding for us to communicate with that computer. If the software and computer need so many softwares, imagine then Allah's creation. They all think they're talking to Allah they're talking here, they're talking there. But there's impurities and devils within people that are not allowing anything to move or go or to be communicated. So then what happens is the whole system of awliya which they're the software, all the communication of people's hearts and du'as and prayers and actions and amal are moving through the souls of Allah's kingdom. One level then the next purified level, the ones that he couldn't clean the next one can't clean and it goes through filtration system. It's like pouring muddy water into a, a level of maybe 20, 30 levels of purification. The soul of the first wali cleans what he can, the second one cleans even stronger levels of impurity that pass through the first filter all the way down, all the way down until you reach towards the qutubs and akhyar, the qutubs and the qawth in which everything will be filtered to when it reaches the qawth it's pure. And that purity is presented into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so that nothing is, is presented dirty into the presence of Prophet now do people have to accept that? Uh, absolutely not, they don't care. This is a system in which Allah has put into place and this is a system in which operates everything. And this is entire created universes are under this system. So this is uh, Allah the way Allah designed it, that all this creation is for you to Prophet but return them to me pure. And then how am I going to do that? I'm going to send for you helpers. And this is the whole system of the Muhammadan government in which their, their souls are in a khidmat and service to Sayyidina Muhammad to pure and purify, to educate, to teach so that people will rise to their reality and enter into their realities inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi can you please elaborate some more on the reality of Taseen and how to apply this understanding in our daily life? Thank you for the question but I think I have elaborated everything on that, <laughs> that I elaborate. Means give the talk again. How to keep that light within your heart? So now that you want this fire, you understand that that fire is named Taseen Sallallahu Ya Rabbi grant me from this reality and this fire tilka ayatul Qur'an that Taseen, His light Sallallahu is a sign of Qur'an. If you see that fire, this is the manzir Qur'an, this is where the Qur'an is coming from the heart of Prophet And the one whom carries that fire and is walking, moving the reality of that soul wal kitab al mubin because the two go together, it has to be within Prophet 
So then the, the rest of Prophet is the kitab and they would describe that, how do, how do you describe Prophet So he's walking Qur'an. This is Kitabullah, Kitab al Mubin, the clear book of Allah. So, this is a divine reality that we're asking, Ya Rabbi, grant us to enter into that fire, grant us to enter into that light, then keep the love for Prophet. Do everything to, to gain the nazar, the love, the nearness, good character, good manners, right? Especially with your brotherhood, you know, don't talk back, don't harass, don't bother people because you're going to make Prophet very angry and he cuts everything because it's a tarbiyah. So means then your life is be cautious, be cautious, you're, you're in the kingdom. You work for the kingdom, you're now trying to gain access and be a part of the kingdom, you have to conduct yourself as the kingdom. If you were before in the jungle, you do as the jungle dictates. Like a baboon or a gorilla, you do whatever you want. You could take your waist and throw it on the glass. Have you been to the zoo what the baboons do? They don't act the same in the kingdom. So the kingdom because you're drawing near to the reality of Prophet it's all about manners and adab, keep the adab, keep the manners, keep the, the, the good character to draw near, to be dressed, to be blessed and so that we can take home from that fire. So means you go into that presence, you do your muraqabah, you do your meditation, you do everything that Prophet has asked of us. Then keep your khuluq good. So when by example, because no one has a better character than Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq what happened? Somebody yelling at him, he stayed quiet, Prophet was smiling. He had enough and he started to say something to the individual, Prophet got up and walked out. Well then this is an example of our lives. <coughs> if you think we're going to do bad and that Prophet will be sitting with us thinking, oh this is nice, okay, okay I'll just close my eyes and we'll, I won't hear this, he walks out. And if you do enough all the time bad like that, he walks out all the time, then you're not keeping the companionship. So it's in our own hands. That's why Prophet gave that example with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq because he's beloved friend. So even my beloved friend, if he wants to do something that I can't sit in that presence, I have to walk. Imagine then our, our responsibility, we're not the beloved friend, we didn't reach these statuses but it gives us the reality that's the khuluq that keeps that presence. Means then we, we be humble and kind to people, loving to people, helpful to people so that Prophet with us says, you know, great, I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that. And then if we, call, if we fall short on our ibadah and we didn't do everything the way we're supposed to, then alhamdulillah they send angels to purify and perfect because the khuluq and the character is good. But if the character is not good, the presence of Prophet is not there, if Prophet's not there then it's going to be a difficulty for the believer. That's when shaitan starts to sit there. You see the people yelling at the park, do you really think when you watch those videos that Prophet is just standing there with these people? No, if he's not there who's there? Shaitan. Because if Nabiin is not there. Do you think the Siddiqeen are showing up? If Prophet walked out the door because of your character, you think the Siddiqs will say, okay I'll stay here, don't worry. <laughs> Siddiqs are going to be first one to leave because Prophet was offended, he walked out. Siddiqeen left, then you think shuhada will I'll stay, no they left too. Means the whole group leaves but who stays there? Shaitan. 
And then shaitan says, don't worry I'd be your friend. Then they start yelling, they start screaming, they insulting, they mocking, ridiculing. And that's when we describe they use their knowledge to ridicule, mock and de de demean people. There's no way that they, they think that Prophet is there. That's when you say, well see manners is a proof that Prophet is not with them Then somebody whom has good manners but other things may not be all together there, doesn't recite correctly, doesn't do like this correctly. Don't you think Prophet walked away because the qirat was incorrect? You think they cared? No, because the history shows that. Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi, a thadu, he was not offended by it. He didn't ever say that Allah won't accept it. These are the excuses that shaitan makes because he wants to excuse character. And he wants to emphasize ridiculous subjects. Those are not what concern Allah and His Rasul. It's the khuluq, it's the character that's important to Allah Not the, the qirat, not the how long you've memorized, how you pronounce Allah with correct uh, number of A's in your pronunciation. This is a distraction from shaitan. So that they don't ever focus on the real fight, the real inner jihad is the character. To be soft and loving and kind inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we were watching one of your videos about yes. this blessed month. Can we know a bit more about what is between two and seven so that we can meditate on it? The reality of two and seven, the twenty-seven, the gates of paradise inshaAllah. That it's the reflection of seventy-two. And other things but for now it's, it's the gate that we're entering. Then what happens in the 27th surah? We started with Surah Tawbah, had no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So then all of this is the importance of Mawlid and Nabi It's not just falling on this month by coincidence. And all these haqqaiqs are not coming by coincidence, it's to understand for the believer that if you're on this journey in this ocean of marifa, Allah is going to give back to us in this surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Because you enter in through tawbah means sacrificing yourself and asking for real repentance in which to clean and purify yourself. But the month of the holy birth is the secret of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. In a huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. In a huwa Sulaiman wa in a huwa wa huwa and he is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So it means this is the gift of Milad al Nabi is the gift of creation and that all creation is coming from Milad al-Nabi and when you don't celebrate the birth you don't even celebrate your existence. It's as if you were a thing that not ever created. You come against yourself by coming against the Milad al-Nabi and the ulama who say it's not important because they're not important. If they understood their existence was based on that for if no Mawlid and no Muhammadun Rasulullah there's nothing, don't even talk. There would be no Qur'an revealed to you, there's no creation that would be brought into existence, there's nothing. Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known, created the light Muhammadun Rasulullah everything coming from that. So it has an immense reality. 
those whom understood and reached to it, they've been dressed by it, they acknowledge it and open within their reality, your who, your true reality. Those whom refrain from it or come against it, they're aptar, they're like something that doesn't even exist. They went into a darkness and iblit, in an abyss. So they don't understand how shaitan is playing with them to cut themselves. It's like you see on these cartoons that or some of these social media you, you see like there's a bridge and the man is on this side cutting in front of him and you're thinking to yourself, this guy is going to cut and fall. How are you cutting this one bridge that you're connected to and you're cutting in front of yourself, as soon as you cut what's going to happen? You're falling. And this is what shaitan does to people. That why are you cutting this? Why are you saying these awful things that you're from that reality? But they don't understand and, and this is the, the, the guile and the, the games and the, the, the playing of shaitan to make somebody cut their way towards a reality, cut their way to the hand of Prophet and they begin to say very bad, very nasty things. And it's just horrific that somebody would cut their own feet like that. And yet they love everything they have. They love their family, they love their children, they love themselves, they celebrate everything about themselves. They celebrate their cars that they bought, the, the jewelry they bought, the birthday that they have. But when it comes to celebrate that which is more important than ourselves, then we see how shaitan plays with people. But the immensity of the reality is the celebration of our own existence and the opening of that reality within the heart of the believer inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa With layers of filtration before our amal is presented to Prophet what is the importance of the effort we put in from ourselves? The importance is the, is the fight. The specifics is not important because we have talks about was it 10 this, was it 13 this, was it can I add this awrat, can I do that, that's all the shaykh is going to lift you. You're not going to make specific zo- uh, zikrs and awrats and like obliterate devils as you're doing it. But the fight against shaitan and ourselves to rise above satanic desires, satanic whispers. You have to participate, although you just sit and, and allow shaitan to do whatever he wants and say, no my shaykh is going to carry me, no. Because shaitan will come and, and devour the servant and then they will curse their shaykh and leave too because shaitan will possess them. So our obligation is to keep fighting, keep the practices, keep the meditation, do the daily awrah, do the daily connections. So that that light is dressing us, blessing, asking for the madad and support of the shaykh, the shaykhs and that light to be all around us. Now can I do this extra, can I do the… I don't know if you have time for extra. Just master this step of the connection, the rest would have answered itself. You feel very powerful connection, then you just you know bring that reality <coughs> And that light within the heart and soul and everything would be sufficient. But just adding on to things, it just busies ourselves and becomes such a burden that people don't want to do any of it because they have made so many now obligations. Master the, the beginning, master the basics with a very strong connection and the stronger the connection the faster the shaykh can lift the servant up and out of the hole of despair and to be lifted away from the presence of shayateen whom are taking and devouring the amal with bad character and bad actions, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how do we help or how can we help friends or fellow humanity who are possessed by shayateen and jinn? Anything we can do for them? Save yourself. 
the, make sure you have ta'weez, you have protection, you have your connection, everything. Because you don't think it's something real and that's the problem. When you ask questions like this, I know you're playing. So if I tell you that down the street the person has, what was that sickness where their hands and feet would come off? Where they would have to put them on an island, they were so scared of ta'oon, it's not ta'oon. Who? AIDS? <laughs> they didn't put people on the island for AIDS. No, they have like there's they don't feel anything, their hands would come and lose their fingers and they would they were so scared of these people with this disease that they would put them on an the island. I can't remember, but we'll say let's say AIDS. <laughs> let's say the sickness is so bad, so bad. So frightening, so horrific. You think he would ask that, uh, uh, what can I do shaykh to go there and leprosy, leprosy. People used to be very scared of leprosy. If you caught it, oh my god all your hands and feet are gonna fall off. You don't ask then shaykh can I, there's a, a leprosy island, do you mind if I go there and give them dawah and can I give them some taweezes? <laughs> you would never even think of going onto that island to, to deal with that. Why? Because it's very real to you. I'm going to go sit there, I'm going to come back and I'm going to be on that island in about two months. <laughs> so you don't do that. So why, why would you now enter in with people who are possessed and have shaitans and because you think it's a joke, you don't think it's real. That you start dealing with people who are possessed is like leprosy. That devil may say, you know I'd rather have you than him, come a little bit closer, open your mouth. Yeah, and you jump right in. Now what do you do? No, we don't do these things, we're not interested in these things. Save your own soul, means you have your ta'weez, you have those whom are responsible, your children, they, they, you, this is your trust from Allah they have ta'weez, your house has ta'weez, your car has ta'weez, in case some shaitan is in another car and tries to hit you and kill you on the road. So it means you did everything to fortify yourself and you do your zikr, you do your practices, you do your, your, your life's obligations and then you begin to feel like your life is in a little rubber rowboat like those people whom are escaping from oppressed countries on an ocean. Our life is like that now, you feel like you're just on this row, rowboat but everywhere seems to be fire because everyone's kind of crazy, everybody's becoming sick, everybody's in some sort of distress or difficulty. So why would, why would you want more people jumping in your little rowboat? They spend all their time not believing, they spend all their time doing whatever they wanted to do. Now they see that you seem to be okay. We all have leprosy but you seem to be eating and enjoying yourself, why are you smiling? We want to come with our leprosy and jump in your boat now. You see those movies like Walking Dead and those horror movies? It has a deep analogy that at one point you're unpopular and you're doing all these practices and everyone's going out and saying, oh come with us and enjoy the dunya, you foolish person, why are you going for zikr on this night, why do you have to grow your beard like that, we're all going out, we're all going out, boom leprosy comes. They get this disease, that disease, they get this COVID, they get that, they can't breathe, they can't talk. Now with all the difficulties you don't seem to be that foolish anymore. They say that you guys seem to have your stuff together, you don't look like you're suffering, we're all sick, why you don't look sick? And that's a danger and that's a, that's a big danger because alhamdulillah with our people none died. They wore their taweezes, they listened to their zikrs, protection. But the groups that have leprosy, of course they're going to run and look for people's boats to jump into because what they did didn't work for them. Now here comes the second and third round, it's not ending, we said last time that was only the beginning. Now coming much more complicated, much more severe, these crazy people. They went in programmed mosquitoes. 
because they didn't understand like, how are we going to spread this sickness and this fitna? Then they took now mosquitoes, contaminated them and released them. And they're now making news reports, oh this uh, mosquito sickness is now flying everywhere. Because shaitan learned from Qur'an about what Allah did to Nimrod when he sent the <laughs> mosquitoes <laughs> against uh, Nimrod, against oppressors. So but the mosquitoes they have a creator and that creator is in control because they don't believe in God, they don't believe in Allah They say, I, we can contaminate these creatures and they will randomly go everywhere, they're wrong. <coughs> they become like Surat al-Fil, they become like Arbabil in which each mosquito Allah will give a name to it and said, you bite him. Because they plan, Allah <laughs> plans better. So in Allah's plan He said, these mosquitoes will be given the coordinates of all these zalims and each mosquito will get his coordinates from Allah and will start now heading for that guy's home. There's a creator in what they do but they don't believe, alhamdulillah for us. They think they can do anything they want and it will happen according to their will. But nothing happens to anyone's will other than Allah's will. Their plan, Allah's plan has already encompassed that. Allah may have inspired them, yes make this, I will take out all of your oppressors and all your dirty people that I was going to take out anyways, we're going to take them out with this. So alhamdulillah that's when the believers believe. The believers they do their dhikr, they do their practices, they do their salah, they give their zakah, they do everything Allah asked for them. Why? The Ya Rabbi don't put my name on any of these lists. In the dunya they have like a no-fly list, if you're a bad person we don't let you fly and everybody keep themselves clean. But Allah has a, a list too, if you've been naughty or nice. That's why, that's why zikr, love, ishq, the good character Ya Rabbi keep me on the list of those whom you love and whom are in the company of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. Allah says, I'm with them, this is the best of company. SubhanAllah Rabbi Ya Rabbi Al-Azat Amin Ya Sifu, Salaamun Al Mursaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa, Basir Surat Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.